how we roll. <laughs> and this is the slowest pump of all time. It's also 25 degrees. In our motorhome, filling up on this thing, I just, I can't even imagine. And maybe it's slower because it's cold. I don't know, other than that, I can think of no reason why. It's like going the speed, like you know when you're about to top off and it slows down at the end. <laughs> like that's the permanent speed on this thing. <laughs> It would seriously take like 30 minutes to fill up in our class A. All right, I'm gonna give up five bucks. It'll get us there. It's an early morning this morning. I think Nathan's used to getting up <laughs> early for rest before the sun, but um, I'm not as great at that. We're on our way to Nashville today. It's an hour and a half drive. We made an appointment with the Nashville Fertility Center. We've been struggling to um, add an addition to our family and it's made it kind of extra tough being on the road so our plan was maybe to get more answers while we were in our in our hometown in our home state of Tennessee so we're gonna go hopefully get some answers today and uh, no it's it's kind of Kind of a little bit exciting, but scary. But we've we've actually we've been on a long journey. I mean, we we had we had issues when we tried to get pregnant the first time with our daughter. It took us 15 months to get pregnant with Hensley, doing fertility. So we've been doing the same things, uh, taking the same medications this time, and it's not worked. So. We're gonna go see a specialist and go see what our options are. So we got the first appointment this morning and we're driving an hour and a half to get there. So I said, I said, we'll take it. I don't care. <laughs> well, so we left this morning at 6 a.m. and my mom actually drove up to our house to uh, stay at our RV while Hensley sleeps because she is not an early riser. She is like her mama. happens a lot in Tennessee. <laughs> you have to watch out for the deer. We're running late. Marissa's booking it. <laughs> this is cracking Marissa up. I found this interesting. <laughs> fertility humor I guess so good news and bad I guess I don't know <laughs> mostly good um, they are gonna be way more aggressive here than what we could do in our hometown that's part of why we're making the drive because we would have much rather have just done everything in Cookville <laughs> than drive an hour and a half it's gonna be a lot of trips here when you're ready to have a baby it's it's really hard for the wait and to be patient and the unknown and we just got to make decisions of how far we want to go into this. It would normally be an advantage big time if we had an RV and we could just park it closer to where all this is at. But unfortunately we're in the middle of renovating the Airstream with our motorhome, And so like if I'm not done with the Airstream and leave it back in Cookville, I won't get it renovated as quick. So I think we're kind of stuck where we're at in Cookville for now. This medicine also does increase chances for twins and triplets. It's pretty funny though. The doctor mentioned, well, you guys, if you had triplets, could probably have a reality TV show, and we're like, <laughs> yeah, we're in an airstream. And if we had triplets, that would be. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it would make for an interesting adventure for sure. So I don't know. I mean, we live life from where we're at. We're not going to buy a huge, massive RV in case we have triplets or quadruplets or whatever. <laughs> so we don't know what's going to happen. Um, honestly, if we had triplets in the Class A it would be rough in the class A as well. There would not be an easy RV to raise triplets in. We'd have uh, to get like a, a toy, toy hauler. hauler. Yeah. We, we seriously would have to look at the space issue for sure if we had triplets, but. <laughs> We'd be right back to square one. Which, I mean, like Nathan said, we just live life at where we're at. And where we're at right now, that's what works for us. We can't 
plan on something. I mean, because we might not even be able to have a baby. I no, mean, yeah. If we do, I mean, the size we have now would be great with just one child. So it's, I, we planned out the space we have. We know if we had another child, we feel like we'd be okay in the space we have. Triplets. Yeah. I don't know. About it'd be that. tough. I mean, that's part of minimalism. If you hold on to things saying what if, or if you just make massive plans saying what if, I mean, that's not simple. That's, it can really tie you down. And that's a big part of what we do is let things go, try to live with where we're at. We have a plan and we do, you know, try to account for changes in life, but you just can't hold on to everything. We're not 100% sold on the floor color. This is not totally in love, and I'm not either with the oh, other that's gray. That's a big difference. That's a big difference. Wow. Yeah. I think part of the issue is that cream couch. I think the lighter we go, the better it's going to look with the cream couch. Mm -hmm. And so we're thinking about stepping down the floor another hair to a lighter color. So I, yeah, I'm liking that. That's the Canadian Hoon. Is that how you say it? Canadian yeah. Hoon Oak. <laughs> This stuff is definitely higher quality than what we got at Lowe's in my opinion. You're sticking straight to this, so it's really like a floating floor that's gonna get a watertight seal around the edge like this. I mean, it's more, it's $1.79 per square foot versus 98 cents at Lowe's, but it just looks way more durable. I really do think it's gonna do a better job than the stuff we got at Lowe's. So we bought the lighter gray that we like better. Unfortunately, you have to order it. <laughs> and so now we gotta wait probably about a week for it to come in and drive all the way back to Lebanon and pick it up. All that good stuff which it, this is about an hour away from our hometown so i think it's gonna be worth it though yeah i'm excited we like it better i think yeah. it'll go better with the cream we just went ahead and bought everything worst case if it doesn't work out we can take that back as well because that's all we do is take buy stuff and take stuff back it's part of i mean this is like a house for us i know some people have said oh you know i wouldn't mess with all that just leave it like it is but we view this as a house and i think a lot of people mm -hmm. if you're building a house or remodeling a house i mean you pick what you love and this is the scheme that we love so we're gonna go I think we're going to go pretty much all in <laughs> on what we want. Well, that's it. why we liked this option. Mm -hmm. We were ready to make something, you know, not the typical RV feel. We wanted something that felt like home and we could personalize and that's what we did. So we've been working on Hensley's bed. We mainly is in Scott. He's been working on Hensley's bed. So <laughs> he's been working really hard on this, but it's coming out really well. The closet space was somewhere around 54 inches by 24, 23, something like that. But I mean, this is definitely gonna be good for her. She can, the space down below, she can fit down here. She, we made sure she could stand up. And so that's one of the key decisions to make if you're doing this is how tall your kid's gonna be. That way you can get the right amount of height separation from the top in the bottom we've got i don't know what about six inches to spare on the bottom at least i yeah. think for her and we're going to cut this down yeah too. this is going to be cut down so there will be a step up right here but this will be cut down another i don't know four or five inches or something to be level with this space as far as the structure taking two by twos for the most part and put them around the edge um, for support our other one we wanted to be it was big enough for an adult to sleep in there and so we had more support in that we actually had some two by twos going down the corners as well but this one isn't going to be rated for like a 250 pound adult two pieces of luon on the top right scott yep the luon. we're going to go with plywood but we couldn't flex it to get it in the space so it fit tight so the luon worked perfect mm -hmm. and so this is all the space on the top and we've got this uh hinge door that's going to come up and down if we needed to right here and then if the hinge door is up this is going to be a spot for a ladder that's going to come up for her so she can access this loft area as a play area as well so it's pretty cool that even though technically it's a smaller space than her other closet we're actually going to make it where with the ladder she has two different play areas down low and then also sort of a uh, treehouse loft area she can come and play in as well because i know she'll enjoy i mean this ladder is not gonna be any taller than any ladder she climbs on all the time in a playground Kids love to climb. <laughs> and so we felt like she was old enough and at the stage where that was a good step for us to take. We went this sort of big girl route instead of the other one that was more of a crib style. This is more of a, uh, you know, toddler style um, bed. This door here, are we gonna, I don't know what we're doing yet. Are we gonna slide that or what do you think on this door? Well, I think probably what you can have is another hinge door that will slide out of the way. Okay. Um, if anything, just to keep her from falling out at nighttime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can get it out of the way. So that this is more for safety and accessibility if we need to get her out of here real quick. Because um, really, we originally thought about making this completely permanent, but we 
decided against that and wanted to at least be able to access it if we needed to. Um, this space is the one that's going to be left open more often, except for when she's sleeping. This will be closed up as well. Good job. Yay. Hey Hensley. <laughs> you Yay. like it? I got it. The bed's done. Scott did an awesome job with this bed. That's Thank you amazing. so much, Scott. It's perfect. It he is. Did. This most of the time will be stayed back here like this. When she goes to bed at night, we can latch that if we need to to keep her from rolling out. Pretty awesome. <laughs> it's gonna be painted white as well. We're excited. It's smaller than the other one, but because she has two play places, I think it'll give her more places to go and play and hang out. I think her space down low is really good. We decided to leave it open this time. Because it is smaller, we didn't wanna put the house frame on it, so we left it open, and that's a good amount of space. And, and we'll probably do some sort of board like we have on the other one, like a magnetic chalkboard dry erase, something where she can be creative. And <laughs> you gotta count, okay? Start counting. Uh oh. Where's she at? Where's mommy meow. at? Meow. Uh oh, I heard her. Where's she at? Meow. Meow. <laughs> hmm. Did you see her? You <laughs> found me! You <laughs> found Your friend of mine, Mr. Potato! Okay. <laughs> Lay down, Hensel. We need to test it out. Oh! Go sleepy. Me, 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 me. Yeah, it's perfect. It's big enough for hide and seek, so uh, <laughs> thumbs up for the yeah, airstream. It is fun. It is <laughs> fun. It is so uh, fun. Can you tell him bye? Say bye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, catch you guys later. And then he drags her. Drags her. Drags her into his lair. And then he goes. And then he tickles the baby. <laughs> <laughs>